Are there any fields that you can't go into because the field is saturated? That is to say, uh, there's no money to be made because uh, uh, there's nothing else to do in that field, like, like the walk. Uh, you only compete on price on the walk. Uh, uh, or, uh, you know, some things are just gone. Like the waterbed. Like what was the number one year for sales in waterbed in the United States? Waterbeds. You know what waterbeds are? Everybody knows what a waterbed is? Okay, the mattress is a is water field. What was the number one year for sales of waterbeds in the United States? 1971. 1971, you'd think something like that. Why? Because everybody was talking about all the news and all that kind of stuff. The number one year for sales of waterbeds in the United States was 2007. And it looks like 2008 will be even bigger. What was the number one year for sales of Beatle music? 2007. Okay? And for hot tubs, 2007. Markets just get bigger. Sealy Posturepedic has a waterbed line because the demand for waterbeds is bigger than ever. All markets just get bigger. Where is the money to be made? Selling cheaper hot tubs? No. Redesigning the hot tub as this Belgian company has. This hot tub seats four. Four adults would sit in this hot tub. Now, what do hot tubs sell for with all the pipes and wires and all that kind of stuff? Five or six thousand bucks or something, seven thousand. Okay, here's a ten thousand dollar hot tub. No pipes, no wires. Okay? What? No pipes, no wires. How do you heat it? That coil, which a human being could stand in, four people could sit in here comfortably, that coil, you put firewood and you light it up, and it heats, the, the coil goes through the, the water, which heats up the water, which means no pipes, no wires, hot tub, okay? So you compete on design, not on price. And this thing, of course, is selling well. To whom? I don't know. Uh, I'm not in that field. Doesn't really matter to me. What I'm talking about applies to absolutely any, anything, and it's a problem you experience. A school teacher got sick of getting sick because our schools, of course, will collect and distribute. All the little kids come in with runny noses and, and bring in the diseases, pass them around, and everybody leaves with a brand new disease. The teacher got sick of getting sick, and everybody say, oh, take echinacea, oh, take aspirin, oh, take Alka-Seltzer, oh, take this, oh, take that. She made a list of absolutely everything that people told her to take, and she turned it into a medicine. Yes, you can go into any field you want. You can go into medicine. And she started a medicine called a company called Airborne. Okay, everybody's going to get sick. So this, she designed the medicine. You can't go into medicine in the United States. It's too much on lockdown. Not at all. Here's a school teacher that went into the medicine business. Yes. I take that. You take that. And does it work for you? Yeah. All right. Yes. So, well, obviously I got some too. Um, so uh, uh, airplanes, offices, schools, restaurants, health clubs, theaters. Anywhere you're going to pick up a disease or an illness or whatever it is. So that's every field's wide open. And another way to make, approach it is you may say, okay, I'm trained to be a CPA, so I want to be a CPA and I solve problems as a CPA. What if you train to be a CPA to make money? And really, you, that's not really what you want to do. What if you want to do something else? What if you, for example, uh, just listen to the news or this morning is Amy Winehouse. Is that her name? Winehouse? Is, your dad says, I don't think she's going to make it. She's going to kill herself eventually with all the drugs she's taking. Well, it, it made me think about a, a friend of mine who was a, a Seattle police officer, undercover narcotics for the longest time, and having the view that either these people are tragic or they're just dope fiends, he said, not at all. He said, they just don't have medical care. That's the problem. These people are all in pain. They're taking painkillers. They're just self-medicating. Why are they self-medicating? Because they don't have medical care. Well, they've got pains of one sort or the other. Their knee hurts or psychological pain. And there's just no cure for their problem. Gangrene used to kill you, okay, until they learned how to cut off a leg. Then the gangrene wouldn't kill you. Maybe the, the, the cutting off a leg would, but so eventually they got even a step above that where they came up with medicines that took care of the gangrene. So gangrene's not a problem anymore, okay? We have these other things where they just don't solve. There's problems, there's things out there that will kill you. If you didn't take care of gang gangrene, it will kill you. There's things out there, emotional things that will kill you if it's not taken care of. But we haven't addressed it. So there's these fields wide open. Why haven't we addressed it? Well, I don't know, we're busy with other things, wars or, or ethanol or whatever else you want to do. Uh, so the money's being directed elsewhere. So if, you, if the money's being directed into that, 
there would be proper care. When there's not proper care, people will go out and get their own. Now, she's not an American, but I'll tell you, any, uh, this police officer told me, any self-respecting American, if a little bit of painkiller does a good job, a whole bunch is better. <laughs> a whole bunch is better. So these people start killing themselves because they want to get themselves even better. So they keep taking it, and then they end up killing themselves. So my point is, every field is wide open. If you look at it as, forget about what's going on there, this is a problem that's going on. These people are killing themselves. And look who's really solving the problem of this. AA. Not the medical industry, not any other, not psychologists, not anybody else. For addictions, uh, 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 Alcoholics Anonymous and all those people are solving it. That guy came up with a product that solved the problem. Nobody who solved it did. Okay? So Amy Winehouse is just not getting the medical care she needs. She's got all the money in the world to do so, but they don't have the cure. There's still a cure that's necessary. She actually got a song about that. But, uh, so another one. Any field you talk about, whatever I say, talking about products, it applies to services too. Import and export of services applies to agriculture as well. Here's a company that designs agricultural products. Do you know when you walk into a Safeway or a Whole Foods or anywhere else, everything you see in the produce department is designed? Romaine lettuce is long because you can ship it and save money. The around stuff, you're shipping too much air. And when there was a, a change in taste from darker green veggies, the little health kick, they made gr greener veggies. All of these fruits and vegetables and cherries and peaches and plums, they're all redesigned to solve problems in the market. Cherries all ripen within a seven day period. So they designed cherries that ripen 21 days later than all the others. So you don't have to have so much manpower available to pick the cherries all at once. All the fruits and vegetables are redesigned for the market. Since these fruits and vegetables are more expensive, because there's fewer people, fewer origins put to it, the prices are higher. Some uh, Orthodox Jews wanted a fruit called, I think it's the ergot, they had to do a Purim or some Jewish festival. It's described in the Bible, but it's gone. So the Orthodox Jews went to some California, uh, it's a citrus product from the description, and went to some California growers and said, here's the description, can you grow it? Of course we can. Now this isn't genetic modification, this is uh, uh, just uh, Gregor Mendel, white peas, red peas, you end up with pink peas. It's just natural, whatever, the, whatever that's called, uh, I forget, but, it, but no big deal. So they say, yeah, we can do it. And so they put 10 acres to this, and now they got this fruit, this, this, uh, this argot out there again. It sold in New York City during Purim at a, at a whatever the festival is, I don't know. But it sold $50 each in a wood presentation box. So they got it for the festivals. That's what it is now. Now in 10 years, it's going to be a buck ninety-nine at Safeway, right? Like those century pears out of uh, uh, Japan that used to be so expensive, each one wrapped in its own little covering. Do you remember those? Yeah. Now they're, again, a buck ninety-nine a pound. Everybody's growing them. So that's how things get introduced. Brand new, designed for the market. The price over time goes down as more and more people get access to it and more and more goes into production. Okay? But it all starts with us coming up with a product. Where do we come up with a product? Well, we come up with products that creates a problem that, that we experience as a problem in a field we love. Got to be a field we love. They tried to make me go to rehab. I said no, no, no. Yes, I've been black, but when I come back, no, no, no. I ain't got the time. And if my daddy thinks I'm fine, they try to make me go to rehab.